so today it's time to talk about vinyl records and my experience with them. Well, it isn't really mine. This is uh, one of the records I've got. It's a great hit from Bob Dylan. But uh, like you've seen yesterday, I've got quite a lot of records. I'm using this one for demonstration of the turntable I use, my PSJ20. Now, Uh, vinyl LP, 12 inch, and dust cover putting on that record on the center spindle. But did I realize something? Yep, that spindle is completely stationary, it does not move with the record at all. Okay, so there's the tone arm with a stylus down there. Zoom in on that uh, because there, that stylus. So it's actually my mother's old turntable, just in case you don't know. And the, the stylus was completely broken on that one, so I've replaced it for 17 euros. And to keep it in good shape, for the same amount of money, I bought this little needle. So, uh, needle brush, I mean. So, there is the turntable uh, record so I've plugged it into input 2 of the micro tap down there but it's on input 1 because of course there are two reasons you cannot uh, tell audio quality to people or how something sounds I can describe it uh, myself but I can't actually let you listen to this particular Final records, really, any final or any system because, uh, yeah, really, there are two problems. One, <laughs> I don't have uh, any copyright uh, free vinyl, and uh, <laughs> I mean, all of the vinyl I showed you was just part of uh, Mammy's old vinyl she used to buy, and yeah, but uh, that is that. And second of all, there's a bit of a problem with telling sound quality through the internet in general because I'm listening to the analog sound on vinyl, and if I were letting you listen to it, you might be listening to a digital tune. So, so three forty-five speed button there, putting the towing arm over its side of the turntable. This record. 12 inch LP, it's been set at 33 and one third RPM. So let's just put the needle or stylus on. And yeah, I can tell you this from the lead in. I just switch it to input 2. Uh, of course, that all they that does sometimes happen a bit with uh, the stylus. Get our guy, and then it just leads in nice, so it just gives those really nice little crackles during it. But of course, here the record gets stuck in the in tray of the, in the lead in. So, what I'll do then, of course, is to uh, I've to pull it a little bit in and I have to mute that and uh, it would spin like normal when right listen that's my hair that record sometimes just skips And then I was. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, yeah, my records just skip horribly. I know the only reason why is because these are very old records and. Mummy wasn't that careful with them, so, and of course, they're also sort of period of non-use, 
uh, in which they were still able to collect quite a bit of dust which I'm cleaning off right now going in the direction of the grooves and pulling it out like that and there's some really nice, really awful same on the right so most of these records need some maintenance and then let's have it place normally Yep. That's it. Okay, so he's me here. I'm outside in again. And you might be able to very faintly hear the sound being picked up by the needle or the stylus. But the real thing happens when it gets uh, amplified to drive the speakers. But before that, the signal for needle is very weak. And uh, so, and in addition, there's that. Uh, equalization problem. So in order to solve these uh, problems I would need to pre-amplify the signal. But as you can see on the back end it says set the moving magnet amplifier on off switch on the bottom according to the amplifier connection. So if this is connected to a line in I can turn on a phono preamp through a switch at the bottom end. Uh, some of the record players I've seen have that on the back and it's a relying output which can return into a full output there. Again, model number PSJ20 on that plate and some really old or high-end turntables don't have any uh, preamplification at all which need to be plugged into a full no input or otherwise they would need a full no preamp if you're Amplifier doesn't have one, but yeah, that is that's my situation. Turntable with built in preamp connected to the amplifier section of micro setting, but two, uh, which doesn't have a built in preamp input two. So, uh, yeah, that is that, and of course. This turntable came out of the 1990s, uh, back when vinyl was pretty close over. Some people still bought a turntable to be able to play their old records. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, records did uh, sell less in the 90s than in the preceding years, but they never completely went away. Uh, and of course, as of right now there's a vinyl research but I'm getting into it. I, one day I also want to buy some new uh, vinyl uh, records. That's going to be a really fun experience. Uh, but the problem with this is, uh, yeah, most of Mummy's records, uh, she didn't take that much care of. Uh, yeah. For example, here is a record from Andreas, Andreas Vollenweider and it's quite dusty on the surface it's quite a bit dusty and as well but that's only the start of all the problems that I might encounter because I came across this Ligola record uh, here, got it inseparable, and it has a bit of a scratch. I'm holding my finger just above, there's a bit of a scratch in the record, and of course, this calls the arm to get stuck or skip. And yeah, it's another one which. A record of hers, and there's this big hair right there, a bit of a debris, and yeah. Some I actually even came across one vinyl record 
and the entire part uh, of it snapped off and of course those records you wouldn't uh, play at all so uh, moving this to again the record collection there's so much in here most of it seems to be the LP so here's for example Stevie Wonder looking back and if we can put one of the records out okay there we go so, all right some Mate records this one's actually quite uh, well preserved also it seems uh, like it but outside but uh, yeah some records do have a tendency to skip so that is that for today okay so there's one more thing uh, about this center I'm going to demonstrate it with my first record I played on it this one from Elpia uh, very well going on. Of course, I'm not going to actually play you any sound because that would hit a YouTube content match. But here we go, putting the to the final record. Please do not call this a vinyl. Yeah, uh, you can have a collection of vinyl or pick up some new vinyl, but an individual disc is not a vinyl. Yeah, just so you know. Putting on the needle at the beginning. It works just fine, but there's this little reject put. So let's focus a little bit on it. Right there. Okay, so that is the reject but So when I hit it, the cartridge or the tongue arm pull is lifted up and of the record and of course the same thing will happen when the record the needle hits the end of the record so I've put it right at the end there to demonstrate the feature auto return I have to pull that up a little bit because otherwise we might get a content match hey hey it's got into the run eh? but so that may is, let's do that in automatic way. Fully automatic. Ah. Yep. There we go. See. The uh, record is now playing. You might be able to hear a little bit of the music coming out of it because remember, it's physical movement and a very little amount of air around the cartridge uh, vibrates when it's making music. But hey, it's about it. That... And. Oh, no, it isn't. That's another track. Uh, yeah, let's just wait through this. The guys are having to run out and you can see the stylus nicely returns back to its position. So, uh, yeah, that is it for today.